Talking to oneself is a habit everyone indulges in. We could no more stop talking to ourselves than we could stop eating and drinking. All that we can do is control the nature and the direction of our inner conversations. Most of us are totally unaware of the fact that our inner conversations are the causes of the circumstances of our life. We are told that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But do we know that man's thinking follows the tracks laid down in his own inner conversations? To turn the tracks to which he is tied, in the direction in which he wants to go, he must put off his former conversation, which is called in the Bible the old man, and be renewed in the spirit of his mind. Speech is the image of mind. Therefore, to change his mind, he must first change his speech. By speech is meant those mental conversations we carry on with ourselves. The world is a magic circle of infinite possible mental transformations, for they are an infinite number of possible mental conversations. When man discovers the creative power of inner talking, he will realize his function and his mission in life. Then he can act to a purpose. Without such knowledge, he acts unconsciously. Everything is a manifestation of the mental conversations which go on in us without our being aware of them. But as civilized beings, we must become aware of them and act with a purpose. A man's mental conversations attracts his life. As long as there is no change in his inner talking, the personal history of the man remains the same. To attempt to change the world before we change our inner talking is to struggle against the very nature of things. Man can go round and round in the same circle of disappointments and misfortunes, not seeing them as caused by his own negative inner talking, but as caused by others. This may seem far-fetched, but it is a matter which lends itself to research and experiment. The formula the chemist illustrates is not more certainly provable than the formula of this science by which words are clothed in objective reality. One day a girl told me, of her difficulties in working with her employer. She was convinced that he unjustly criticized and rejected her very best efforts. Upon hearing her story, I explained that if she thought him unfair, it was a sure sign that she herself was in need of a new conversation piece. There was no doubt but that she was mentally arguing with her employer, for others only echo that which we whispered to them in secret. She confessed that she argued with him mentally all day long, when she realized what she had been doing, she agreed to change her inner conversations with her employer. She imagined that he had congratulated her on her fine work, and that she, in turn, had thanked him for his praise and kindness. To her great delight, she soon discovered that her own attitude was the cause of all that befell her. The behavior of her employer reversed itself. It echoed, as it had always done, her mental conversations with him. I rarely see a person alone without wondering to what conversation piece is he tied, on what mysterious track is he walking. We must begin to take life consciously, for the solution of all problems lies just in this. The second man, the Lord from heaven in all of us, is trying to become self-conscious in the body, that he may be about his father's business. What are his labors? to imitate his father, to become master of the word, master of his inner talking, that he may mold this world of ours into a likeness with the kingdom of love. The prophet said, Be ye imitators of God as dear children. How would I imitate God? Well, we are told that God calls things that are not seen as though they were seen, and the unseen become seen. This is the way the girl called forth praise and kindness from her employer. She carried on an imaginary conversation with her employer from the premise that he had praised her work, and he did. Our inner conversations represent in various ways the world we live in. Our individual worlds are self-revelations of our own inner speech. We are told that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof. For by their words they shall be justified, and by their words they shall be condemned. We abandon ourselves to negative inner talking, yet expect to retain command of life. Our present mental conversations do not recede into the past as man believes. 
they advance into the future to confront us as wasted or invested words. My word, said the prophet, shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in all the things whereto I sent it. How would I send my word to help a friend? I would imagine that I am hearing his voice, that he is physically present, that my hand is on him. I would then congratulate him on his good fortune, tell him that I have never seen him look better. I would listen as though I heard him. I would imagine that he is telling me he has never felt better, he has never been happier. And I would know that in this loving, knowing communion with another, a communion populous with loving thoughts and feelings, that my word was sent, and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it.